And here we are back after the rest day, back into the tour. Also coincidentally, just after my birthday, another year older. You know, beats the alternatives. So we're going into the last, what, six, seven days of the tour, six days of the tour, I guess. 16, 20, yeah. Stage 16, there's 21 stages. Yeah, anyway, last week. And uh, so we're doing a piece they are on last couple of mountain stages. We'll get into a lot of lasts now. And speaking of mountain stages, we're also in the King of the Mountains jersey competition. Now one rider, a teammate of Julian Alaphilippe, has already gone over the summit which if you're not going to get all the points, you want them to go to your teammate. It's sort of a strategic thing. That way, when uh, Alaphilippe came over, if he didn't beat the gentleman that I'm going to draw here in a second behind him, Warren Barguilla, another Frenchman, it was only the difference of one point. So it was on this particular climb, which is a... Uh, Cat 2, the Col de Portet d'Aspet, pardon my French, in terms of, pardon my unaccented French, um, there would only be three points and two points on offer for the next two positions. So if Alaphilippe wasn't able to out-sprint Barguil over the climb, although he was, it would only sway the competition by one point. <clears throat> Clearly, because Alaphilippe is in the polka dot jersey, he leads the competition at this point. But um, I'm a little unclear. I thought he was a little further ahead, and he may still be, and they're just doing a little bit of TV selling. But um, nevertheless, Alaphilippe did take the stage. So again, you notice I did not start the figure right in the center of the image, but off to one side. This is all about <clears throat> composition. You need to always think about where you're placing things in your image. What is the uh, energy you're trying to convey? How, does the, how are you going to make your picture plane most interesting? And you do that both with line work and with what color you use and how you place your color. So we're just getting in the uh, details of the roadway here. And because it's a climb, I like to really show the what polka dots I can is kind of entertaining how often you see the back of road signs. What I really enjoy because it just it's you know different is uh, like the, the season starts with the tour of tour down under and it's raced in uh, southern Australia of South Australia the and um, of course, that road sign, because they're on the other side of the road, would be facing you, and so it's always amusing to me to um, see those differences. So a couple of bushes can be trees, and this is one of those chances where you won't see the sky over the climb. A little more heavily treed here at the top. It's good again because it's not a giant climb. Notice I'm writing this backwards. Um, you've seen signs, handmade signs, where people sort of run out of space. They don't think it all, th all the way through. So one way to prevent that is to do it backwards. And that way it ends where you want it to end. 
Of course, it helps if you spell it properly backwards, but eh, so it goes. They don't spell for U O R, but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so now we're going to color. Oh, let me title this. I think we'll just keep it simple. Yeah, here. We'll call it more polka dots. And for those of you who uh, don't do it the way us goofy Americans do it, we date our things month, date, and year, as opposed to the way virtually everybody else in the world does it, which actually, if you think about it, makes more sense. That it's the day, then the month, and then the year, sort of in descending order. I remember as a kid, my father always dated things, the European style. And as a kid, I thought that was so strange, exotic even. And now, I've adopted a lot of things he did, but that's not one of them. The main one I adopted from him was doing crossword puzzles in ink. And as you can see, actually thinking of that, and maybe that's the correlation, that, you know, I, there was no preliminary sketch. You notice that that was bare paper when I started doing the line work, and I'm working with a medium, both the ink and the watercolor for that matter, where you really can't erase or make corrections. And it's not because I'm a risk taker. Well, I am, but um, it's, I just, I don't know like the commitment of it, you know, make a decision and go with it. But it's, I've seen artists, and a lot of artists do this, and I'm not saying it's anything wrong with it. I just realized I forgot his other arm. Um, but I don't like the idea of preliminary drawings, where you work out all of the problems as you create a piece before you actually start creating the piece. But um, I like solving those issues as I work on it. So you see in the painting the history of the artist's thought process. Things being changed, moved, should that be necessary. And so you get the history of the painting. I was actually watching, there's a quite a good show on PBS. Um, Trash or Fortune, I think it is. And the, basically the premise is they, they have found or people have had these paintings and they're trying to verify their authenticity. And in this particular show I was watching, they were trying to decide whether a painting was fake. And one of the things through um, radiology, they could see how the painting had been changed underneath. How, you know, the artist had changed his mind, had painted something in and then painted it back out. And they actually were citing that as a proof that it wasn't a forgery because why would you bother putting something that nobody could see in the painting. And also, if you weren't the actual artist, how would you know it was there in the first place? Particularly with this potential forgery having been even painted so much earlier. prior to using that technology to look under the surface of the painting. So, as you can see, I've worked through the <clears throat> reds, yellows, laid in a little. I don't know if you caught that um, transition of lighter and darker flesh tones, just to give a little more dimension to the um, arms of the racers. I 
So this is the banner, banner across the top that marks the um, King of the Mountains point where this finish line is. That line would be right underneath the banner, or it should be anyway. Again, we'll make some black using the violet. There's already some dark green there, but that's still too violet. So pick up some green. So like if you want to make a good mud, good dirt color, you would use complementary colors, colors across each other on the color wheel. And that's the same basic premise that I'm creating this black with using but in this case, they're not quite exactly across each other. If it was green, then it would be red, but it's purple, so that gives me a little deeper, darker variety. So, one thing I've noticed that I do, but I usually seem to have not been doing on camera, is like right now I'm going to lay this road in, so I'm going to turn this sideways. So I can get my strokes to mimic that road just rising up over the climb. And then see I can get that stroke that really swings out. Okay, so now all it's left to do is the foliage in the background. Now this is actually counterintuitive, sort of different from what I've been saying, is that I'm going to take the darks, lay the dark section of the foliage in first, and then I'm going to come back over that and lay in the lighter foliage to build some dimension of the trees. So, like I say, just because there's a rule to do it one way, doesn't mean you do it that way all the time. So in the race today, yet again, this has been an unusual pattern. This is a little different for the tour. This breakaway is already, these guys are 10 minutes ahead of the main peloton where all of the GC, General, for Cla General Classification Riders are. They've opened up this gap because I think Alaphilippe is one of the highest placed riders in this group. And he's an hour behind the race leader, Garrett Thomas. So those behind don't need to worry about where they are in the general classification in regards to these riders. So there's no real reason to chase. And in a three-week tour, a lot of what happens is survival. You need to husband your strength, save your energy. So with none of these guys really being a danger to their positions, if they ride a little slower, take it a little easier, and keep an eye on their immediate rivals, then they'll be stronger for when the time comes when they have to race against each other. So as long as everybody they care about is with them. So that can be why a break takes a long time to get started too, because, oh, nope, that guy's too important, chase him down. Nope, that guy's too important, chase him down. So, and you can see how the foliage, see how now I got that dimension built up in the trees by putting the dark down first and laying some of the lighter over it. I'll just come in one more time with this brightest ochre yellows. I think this is actually a Naples yellow. And just one more hint. And so here I'm using the translucency of the watercolor to help build dimension. And that's why I'm going dark to light and not the other way around in this one case. So we just need a little dimension. And that gives me time to say that all of these paintings are available for sale 
at my blog. It provides a direct link through to the website, and that's theartofcycling.blogspot.com. And it'll link you to my website at gregleach.com. That's G-R-E-I-G-L-E-A-C-H.com. And those will be on the in the descriptions. So that's today's painting. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're enjoying the tour. And that you'll check back tomorrow when we got a short explosive climb.